Dr. Novak again and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that uh, uh, questions are being asked and other people make videos about it as far as natural. Uh, questions being asked that uh, why would I use a plenum when uh, that's not natural? There's no natural lakes and ponds out there that uh, use a plenum. And uh, well, you'll see YouTube channels about natural systems. Uh, they don't require water changes and stuff like that. Well, first of all, let's get down to the facts, okay? Man-made lakes and ponds. If you look at like where I live here in Florida, 100% of the lakes and ponds here are man-made and where I live. If you go to the, like the villages, 100% of their lakes and ponds are man-made. When you, uh, like for example, uh, let's take uh, a lot of towns. When I used to live up north, a lot of towns have man-made lakes maybe in the town or something like that. They're man-made. They're not natural. They're man-made. And for, I'll give you a, a good example. Let's take an entire state, for example. Uh, like, uh, for example, like a state like Missouri, where uh, a lot of people will claim that uh, Missouri doesn't really have any natural lakes. This is because they discounted the many score holes and oxbow lakes, karst made lakes. And, uh, but indeed, the lakes and ponds, most of Missouri, Missourians, you know, the people of Missouri visit, most of them in Missouri are all man-made, believe it or not. And that's an entire state, for example. Uh, if you go to Arizona, the reservoir there, man-made. Lake Mead, man-made. Huge lake. There are, I can go state after state after state, and we can go with what man has made of lakes and ponds and things like this, oxbow lakes and stuff like this, all made by man. There are very few natural where they have, occurred through volcanic action or, or through earthquakes or something, natural ponds and stuff where man has not intervened and made tons and tons of man-made lakes. Here in Florida, it's required from the Army Corps of Engineers that we make these man-made lakes because we're only like, I think, 85 feet above sea level, not very high above sea level. In order to prevent from flooding, or are to prevent homes from flooding because most of, like example, Florida was swampland. So let's get into, we understand now that a lot of lakes and ponds and things like this, even in entire states, are made by man. Therefore, when man makes something, man has to intervene in taking care of it. So when people make mention that, oh, natural lakes and ponds, well, most of the lakes and ponds that we deal with here in the United States are man-made. And therefore, they must be contend with over time. Meaning that, like, uh, for example, Lake Montalise in Missouri, back in the early 70s, had to be completely drained of its water, for example. It was a lake made where the homes were all around the lake. And it had to be completely drained in the 70s and cleaned out because it was a man-made lake, not a natural lake, but man-made. In natural lakes, the intersection of topography, which is groundwater and the lake bottom, the fluids are moving in and out constantly and natural. But in man-made, this is not occurring. Therefore, these lakes had to be contend to over time, like I said. Uh, and then I lived in Illinois. Uh, some of the lakes have to be drained. They go through membrane bags. They, they, they clean them out, send the muck 
into membrane bags that let the water go back into the lake, but yet keep all the muck and everything that accumulates in the lake because it is man-made. It is not a natural system. So when people try to say that we in our aquarium should commit to natural, there's nothing about our aquariums that are natural. Okay, that they're, they're man-made. We are making an environment that we have been making for hundreds of years, and we have entire states that are full of nothing but man-made lakes and ponds and reservoirs. So I don't get where people come up with this, oh, you have to have a, quote, natural system. There's very few natural systems out there compared to man-made systems. And whenever man makes something, he has to contend with it clogging and getting dirty and fluids moving through the substrate. No matter what, he has to contend with that. If he does not, it eventually collapses and it must be contend with to evacuate the water out of it or some way clean up the pond or lake to make it vital again. A lot of times this will happen through aeration, which we see, like, for example, if you go in Florida and go to a place called the Villages. Now, there's over 140 to 180,000 people that live in the Villages, and they got lots of lakes and stuff, and they use recycled water to water their lawns and stuff like that. And if you go around in there, you will see a lot of their lakes and ponds with aeration. So that means man is intervening into those large lakes. And you can go to Florida anytime and visit the villages and you can take a trolley car around the villages and you will see a lot of the ponds will have bubblers in them to keep the oxygen and redox level up high. So these people who say natural, well, how are you using that word natural since a lot of lakes and ponds and reservoirs are not naturally made, but man-made. I think people listen to these people and they think that plenums do not have a spot in the aquarium tray. But because we're artificially making an environment in our ponds, lakes, and reservoirs, because we are artificially making an environment, and then allowing fish and animal life to live in it, we have to contend with it over the long run. That's why I've often said, when we found out that aquariums could use fluids to remove the substrate, like natural systems do, what natural systems occur, because fluids do move. A lot of people say, well, fluids don't move in natural systems. Well. What are you pointing to? Because most of the lakes and ponds are, like I said, man-made. And when fluids don't move, a lot of them need help. Like I said, go to the villages. You'll see they all have aeration devices. They need help. These were all man-made. And if they don't have these devices, they are going to go bad. And I can see that right here where I live. A lot of our lakes and ponds have no aeration of whatsoever, and you can see that they are not doing well, these ponds and lakes aren't. Basically, they're retention ponds and retention lakes is what they are. People pay a premium to have a house around one of these man-made lakes or ponds that are basically retention, and they carry animal life in them. People go fishing in them. But this doesn't mean they can't be intervened from man, which most of them need to be helped. They can't last forever, hundreds of years, without having some kind of help from mankind coming in there and cleaning them up some way, somehow, or getting the muck out of them some way, somehow, because fluids aren't moving. And you can see that, like where I live, compared to if you go up to the villages where they have aeration devices in their lakes and ponds. 
we're finding out that you need to do this for long-term reliability and stability of aquarium. Now you're always going to have an exception to a rule, right? You're always going to have the person who drives without insurance saying, I've never owned insurance and I've never had to have insurance. And look at all the money you wasted. We always are going to find that person who is going to be an exception to the rule. Well, you've been lucky, but they boast about it. We always can find an exception to a rule. But once you understand the science of why fluids have to move through a substrate, how it does not hinder plant growth, how you do not have to depend on 70% or 40% of plant life in your aquarium, that is optional. You soon learn how people can be very, very successful with very little plant life in their aquarium and still have healthy animal life. Unless healthy animal life is not your concern and your concern is basically plants, then, you know, all my tanks have plants in them to some degree. So uh, they've been going on for years. And some, uh, some just have moss, your flame moss. That's it. Just moss. No, no really in the gravel plants that you could say are, are helping clean the aquarium. Just moss. To be successful is to understand how science works with your aquariums. That's all I'm saying. So before someone says natural systems, what are you talking about? Natural. Because most of the lakes and ponds we have, even entire states have, are all man-made. So what are you referring to when you say natural? Because if we don't intervene with these ponds and lakes that man makes, somehow, some way, they will collapse. We all know that. Limonologists know that. Everybody knows that. You have to intervene because it's not quite working the same as a natural system where fluids are moving through the substrate and allowing certain bacteria to thrive and live to oxidize the insults that are coming into the lakes and ponds. That's all I'm saying. So treat it as a man-made environment and put the odds in your favor. That's all I'm telling you. Don't be bamboozled by, oh, you have to make natural. I've explained it even in my book and everything else that you cannot go with a fish tank, put it in a natural system and then slide a bottom on it and take it to your house and say, I have a natural system. See, I got this right from, from the pond or lake. I, I took it, put the container in the ground, slid a piece of glass underneath it. I got all the fauna. I got everything. It's all natural. That aquarium will collapse. It will not do well over time. And you will soon find out, be scratching your head, oh, how come it's not working? Why is it dying? It's all natural. It has all the bacteria. It has all the natural elements. Why, why is it going bad on me? We as humans have to intervene and help along what we've just done. It's not going to last. Fluids need to move. Water it gets old. It uh, starts losing a lot of its chemical composition. So we have to add back that chemical composition back in the water that could start lacking over time. That's a big thing that people seem to forget. The chemical composition of the water starts changing over time because in natural systems you have rain, you have replenishment from snow, you have other sources putting water back into a system where we cannot just fill up a little bit of evaporation water because it's not enough. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching. And I hope you understand what I was trying to say. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, happy fish keeping.